Could you tell us a little about how you came to be involved with season two, and if you were like familiar with season one or anything? Uh, Go actually, ahead. I'm going to jump right in. I have a funny story about that. Um, I was actually going to work on, on season one uh, as one of the prison guards, and a few days before filming started, I broke my foot on another show and had to pull out of season one. I was pretty devastated, but this, this happened a year later, so it all worked out in a really cool way, and uh, I'm really glad to be a part of it in this capacity this season. Uh, gladly break my leg again if I could. Yeah. Well, it would be on, on theme with misery. I know, right? Right. Uh, no, I, I, I hadn't seen it. Uh, it was kind of a, a quick thing that happened where I sort of got called and asked if, if I was available, and I was, and then I, I just came over and did it. But I, I did watch the first season, and I know Andre Holland, and um, so I was, I was very impressed. I thought that it was such a beautiful first season and so interesting, but the scripts were really good. Yeah, it was an easy yes for me. Um, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, what is the dynamic between the two of you? There's certainly rivalry between the Merrills and others on the show, but is there a rivalry between the brothers? Yeah, so I'm the older brother, and you know, this character, Ace Merrill, is, comes from. You know, you, Kiefer Sutherland is, is from uh, Stand By Me, and, and I think that we find Ace in the future pretty much where you would imagine that that character would be in the future. He's he's not changed a lot. Uh, he's still a pretty complicated guy, and his relationship to his brother, I think Chris. I don't know. I kind of feel like Chris is like sort of the only guy that he kind of likes. <laughs> And so it's complicated between us because I think there's a lot of um, loyalty questions of who are you loyal to, like what, like who, where are your loyalties. I think and, the Merrill loyalty is, yeah. is pretty deep. Yeah, really and deep. so, uh, yeah, we, we explore that part of our relationship a lot. Yeah, I, I mean, they have their issues, and we'll, we'll see a lot of them, but... Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's pretty a tumultuous relationship, um, but I, I feel like Chris is, like you said, anchored, you know, to the town through the loyalty uh, and, and his love for his family, so we'll see where that takes it. Yeah, I'm doing exactly the same character that I did on um, Boardwalk Empire. I just, I dusted off that bowler cap and just, uh, no, he's, it's very, it's very different. But I'd love to play uh, people that are ethically somewhat compromised. I think that there's something really interesting about like why people behave the way they behave. And they, we explore that in this, I think, like, why Ace is the way Ace is, I think is explored in this, and uh, which is kind of interesting, and uh, his relationship to the world, and um, so, yeah, it's the same character, <laughs> um, same voice. Speaking of why Ace is the white way he is, how is Ace going to be set up this season? Like, what can we expect his life to look like when the season starts? Well, the, the big sort of where the Merrills are in Castle Rock is the Merrills are kind of like, they're sort of a mob boss family in a way. That Pop Merrill, who Tim Robbins plays, uh, is our uncle. And he kind of runs things in town, and we're sort of underlings to a certain extent. Um, but I'm the, I'm vying to kind of take over. And so when you find Ace, you know, he's being that kind of, disrespectful to everyone, secondhand toady that uh, people are in that situation, I think. So, yeah, we're sort of ruling the town when things start. But then, of course, Annie Wilkes shows up and things get complicated. As do happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, how do they sort of respond to the supernatural rumors about House Rock and Drew Smith's at the beginning? Say that again, sorry. How do they sort of view the supernatural rumors in the towns? 
You know, I think one of the things really funny about Stephen King is that people tend to forget a lot that like bad things have happened like in the past it's sort of a forgetful place you know yeah. it's like everyone forgets that like there's this really weird bad patch that happened before and I think they tend to not really be particularly aware that supernatural things have happened before although they are aware to some extent yeah it's, it's almost just part of the fabric yeah a little bit. yeah I think so yeah I, I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, they kind of just, you know, I mean, it's, it could be looked at as sort of like uh, the weakness of a lot of the Stephen King characters is that they sometimes forget that, like, these supernatural things are going on around them. And with the Stephen King universe and the supernatural, it, the fun part is that anything is possible. So uh, that's what made this season pretty exciting is because we were constantly... <laughs> You know, surprised. You know, with the twists and turns and where things are going. So, uh, that part I think for fans also is going to be fun to watch. Yeah. So, had you were you already fans of Stephen King and were familiar with the Merrills and their whole storyline? So, it's just kind of like, oh, that's where I'm playing. Or did you have to go and do some research and uh, find I, out? I actually started, started reading Salem's Lot again when uh, when we started filming, just because I wanted to kind of get back in that world and. Uh, but when I was growing up, Pet Cemetery was, was the book that, you know, in the horror genre, that changed things for me. Yeah. I love The Stand. That was like my favorite, that's my favorite Stephen King is The Stand. But I, I, you know, I just knew of the, you know, Ace from Stand By Me. Um, he's pretty memorable. So it was, it was, yeah, I mean, I have always been a fan of Stephen King. I think that his particular brand of horror is that is specific, and uh, so and relatable. I feel, which yeah. is why there's so much of Stephen King out yeah. right now. I think. And it's such a part of like the fabric of, of American, you know, sort of uh, literature. You know, just the fact that he's he's around so. Much. I, I had some some passing knowledge, but yeah, we had to dig in there a little bit. And looking at Tim Robbins, I mean, but I mean, like people are being pretty memorable moments. So, is there anything on set, off set that you can talk about with him? I remember the first day I worked with him, we had a scene together, and I turned around to look at him, and then I just kept looking. <laughs> he was very tall. <laughs> Makes you feel like a kid, <laughs> uh, but as for the, the actual work, is incredible. Um, sometimes I find myself just kind of watching him work. He takes his work very seriously, and he works really hard, and, and he cares a lot. And it's really fun to work with that. Yeah, he's so tall. <laughs> so tall. It's hard to be. It's hard to be intimidating toward him, which I think I was asked to do a couple of times. And it's you do. You feel like a baby, you know, when you're sort of. He's looking down on you, but no, he's 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 great, and he's he was so game. Um, I, the first day I worked with him, I, we were standing outside in between takes, and I said, "What do you so What do you think about all this?" You know, because it's it's particular, you know, like what we're trying to do. And he said, "I I think it's pretty cool," and I think that's that's kind of really sums up for me a lot of like what this experience has been. It's like cool to bring these characters, you know, from the Stephen King canon that like we all know and we bring all this history uh, with us when we come to these new stories about it. And so uh, it was fun to work on. It was fun to like put in all those little Easter egg type things for fans of Stephen King and just reading you know we get scripts and just reading scripts and seeing the little you know the little Easter eggs or yeah. that part was really fun yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so Ace sees himself as the heir apparent how does his brother feel about you trying to take over does he like the status quo or do you think that you'd be a, a better at the head of the two it's a good question <laughs> it's a really good question be careful yeah I, it, it seems it seems as if he, he's um, he thinks probably it's not the best idea that um, Ace take over, but I, I think it's left a little nebulous. I'm not I'm not totally sure. I think he's trying to figure out, but I don't know. You'd have to ask you'd have to ask him. 
Yeah, uh, I, I just think that when it comes to the brothers, I think they're just two completely different personalities with two completely different, you know, things that anchor them in the town. Uh, so I, I don't know if it's necessarily a thing, uh, but I'm sure I'm, I'm sure there's questions and concerns with a wild card, you know, like the East kind of taking over things or the possibility of it. It's one of those situations where where everything is set up as like a test of your loyalty. Like, who are you loyal to? Like, who whose side are you on? You know, there's a lot of that in this. It's like, who who's to be trusted? Who's not to be trusted? Like, what side are you on? I feel like and that we, was fun too because we didn't even know. We didn't always right? know exactly where it was going to go, and so um, you. I mean, I think anytime you have like. This sort of the the thrill of watching people interact is not quite knowing like whose side are they on, and I think that there's a lot of that in this, you know, like. Who, who are you? All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.